From the National Newsroom of the Canadian Press, I'm Naira Ahmed. Tens of thousands of Israelis protested for an immediate ceasefire in one of the largest demonstrations since the latest war between Israel and Hamas began nearly 11 months ago. They were gathered outside Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office in Jerusalem as some were weeping after six more hostages were found dead in Gaza. A senior Hamas official says the hostages would have been alive if Israel had accepted a U.S.-backed ceasefire proposal that Hamas said it had agreed to in July. Meanwhile, Gaza's health ministry says over 72,600 children received polio vaccines today on the first official day of the large-scale campaign. Palestinian health authorities and United Nations agencies are hoping to prevent an outbreak with a plan to vaccinate over 640,000 children through September 9th. Israel has agreed to eight-hour pauses in the fighting to facilitate the campaign, while Israeli airstrikes today killed four people. Back at home, two people have died and six others have been injured in northern Alberta after a semi-truck collided with a group of motorcycles. RCMP say their initial investigation shows an oncoming semi-truck crossed over the center line and struck the motorcycle riders who were traveling in one large group. Officers say the two people killed were both motorcyclists aged 38 and 33. At least six additional riders with various injuries were taken to hospital. A 4.6 magnitude earthquake rumbled through parts of Quebec early this morning. Natural Resources Canada says the quake struck at around 5.43 a.m. They say it was, quote, lightly felt in Drummondville, Trois-Rivières and Montreal, but there were no immediate reports of injuries or damages in any of the affected cities or anywhere else in the province. The U.S. Geological Survey's Earthquake Hazards Program places the epicenter in or around Pierreville, which is in the Centre du Québec region of the province. Michelle McQuig, The Canadian Press. The Bank of Canada is expected to cut its interest rate on Wednesday for a third consecutive time. The central bank's key interest rate target sits at 4.5% after quarter-point cuts in June and July. Canada's annual inflation rate fell to 2.5% in July. This coming week will be a short one for the markets in Canada and the U.S. because of the Labor Day holiday Monday. And if you've got an old digital camera sitting around somewhere, you're in luck. The out-of-date technology has become trendy among high school and university students. Selma Parak is a professor with Western University's Faculty of Information and Media and says it isn't surprising. These are artifacts of like an earlier time. And I think that makes them kind of transportative, right? You can hold a photo in your hand and it reminds you of a pre-digital era. Pirac says the students embracing the digital cam trend are nostalgic for what feels like a simpler time. This is the Canadian Press. In sports, Canada's Paralympic team has added two more silver medals in Paris. 28-year-old Arlie Rivard won a second medal at the Games, this time in the women's 100-meter freestyle. She was a bronze medalist in the 50-meter freestyle on opening night at the pool. And Canadian wheelchair racer 44-year-old Brent Lakatos earned Paralympic silver in the men's T53 400-meter final. In the MLB, Royce Lewis hit a go-ahead three-run home run in the eighth inning, and the Minnesota Twins rallied to beat the Toronto Blue Jays 4-3. Next, the Jays are home on Tuesday for the first of two games against Philadelphia. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers are visiting the Saskatchewan Rough Riders tonight in CFL action. It's the first game of a home-and-home for both sides, with the Bombers carrying a three-game winning streak, and San Francisco 49ers player Ricky Parasol is out of hospital after getting shot during an attempted robbery. Local officials say a 17-year-old male suspect is now also in custody. From the Canadian Press, I'm Naira Ahmed. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to follow and subscribe. For more of today's top stories, visit the Canadian Press News.ca.